In this problem, we will be using conditional probability to answer some important questions. So we're given an example here about a particular syndrome, and we're told that diagnosing and treating this syndrome can be very difficult. So patients who come in experiencing three symptoms, and the symptoms are temperature above 101, uh, chest pain, and a deep cough, if they come in with those symptoms, based on previous statistics, we know there's an actually a 4% chance that this person has what's called TRAFS disease or TRAFS syndrome. Now, if they do have TRAFS, we found that a recently developed treatment is 85% effective in eliminating all those symptoms. So a person comes in, they do have this syndrome. If they are given the treatment and they do have the syndrome, it's found to be 85% effective. Now, for those patients who do come in but don't have TRAFs, that treatment is still 10% effective in terms of eliminating the symptoms. Now, a lot of information is being presented here, but we're going to look at these two questions. First, what is the probability that a particular patient has this TRAF syndrome and that they do respond positively to the treatment? The second question will be, okay, we know a person has responded positively to the treatment, that their symptoms have been eliminated. What's the probability that they did originally have this TRAF syndrome? So I'm going to first answer this question, number one, and then on the next page we will look at number two. A lot of information is being presented here. And what I strongly recommend doing in these situations is to draw a tree diagram to help us illustrate the various probabilities. These are we're talking about conditional probabilities, but if you look at number one here, we want to know the probability that a particular patient has TRAFS and they respond positively. That means we're also looking here for an AND statement. We're talking about events here that are very much related to each other. These are dependent events. So here's a person. I'm going to draw a quick person. They come into the doctor and they have these symptoms. Now, at any given time from these symptoms, there is, as we're told, two possibilities. That they do have TRAFs, so I'll write that here. They do have TRAFs or they don't have this. So those are the two possibilities. They come in with these symptoms. There's two possibilities. TRAFs, that they do actually have it, and the chance that they don't. Now we were told in the beginning of the problem here that there is at any given time a 4% chance that's associated with the probability of having TRAFs, in this case, is 0 0.04. That's the probability here, it's 4%, of having this syndrome. The probability of not having it, then, is going to be 1 minus this, which is 0.96. So a, a patient's coming in, they have these symptoms, there's a 4% chance that they do have this syndrome, and there's a 96% chance that they don't. Okay, so now... Regardless of whether they do or they don't, let's suppose the patient has the treatment. So here, let's suppose this patient has the treatment. From here, they're going to be given the treatment, and they either are going to respond positively or they're going to respond negatively. So their symptoms, if it's positive, they're going to have their symptoms eliminated. If it's negative, they're not going to feel better. Same thing down here. I mean, a person comes in, they're either going to respond positively or negatively to the treatment. So let's suppose the person has TRAFs. Up above, we're told that out of those patients with TRAFs, which is right here, a recently developed treatment is found to be 85% effective. That means right here at 85, it's found to be 85% effective. The probability of them getting better is 0.85. The second part, that means if it's 85% effective, then 15% is not going to get better. So that would be 0.15. Down below, for those patients who don't have TRAFs, we're told that this treatment up above is 10% effective. So there is a, a probability of 0.10 that for someone who doesn't have TRAFs, they do have a positive results to the treatment. Therefore, that makes this down here 90. So this is illustrating graphically what's happening here. If a person has TRAFs and then they get better, the person has TRAFs and they don't respond. So let's write this up. This is TRAFs and 
Uh, T represents the traps, and positive means they, re they received a treatment and had a positive effect. This would be they have the syndrome and they did not get better. Down below, we'll say D for don't have traps, but they did get better. And down here, they don't have traps and they didn't get better. It should be clear that these are the four possibilities. They either have the syndrome or they don't. They either responded positively or negatively to the treatment. So finally, being able to answer this question here, number one. So what we want to know is what is the probability that a patient has traps, so they do have a T here, and they respond positively. That's referring to these patients right here. They have traps and they respond positively. So how do I find that? Well, let's consider this. The probability that they have traps is 0.04. And we know is associated with multiplication. And the probability that this person re responds positively, 0.85. That means if we take 0.04 and multiply by 0.85, we will get 0.0 4. This is a probability of 0 0.034 or approximately 3.4%. So there's a 3.4% chance that a patient who comes in has traps and they get better from the treatment. On the next page, I'm going to answer question 2. And what I'm going to do first on this next page is find the probability of all four of these outcomes. We just found the probability of they have this syndrome and they responded positively. But I'm going to, on the next page, find all other probabilities here for these three other outcomes because they're going to be essential when we go to answer the question in number two. For this second problem, we need to calculate, and you notice that I have already gone ahead and calculated the probabilities of the three other outcomes. I have shown that to solve for these other outcomes, so that is they have the syndrome and they test or they respond negatively, we took 0 0.04 that they have the syndrome and multiplied it times the probability that they don't respond positively or respond negatively. You multiply that and get 0 0.006. Down below, they don't have the syndrome but do respond positively is 0.96 for not having the syndrome and responding positively is 0 0.10. We get 0 0.096. And finally, the by far the most likely outcome, having 0.864, is that they don't have the syndrome and they don't respond positively. And this occurs, if we multiply those two probabilities, this occurs 0.864. This is what we get for the probability, which is about 86.4%. So 86.4% of patients fall into this final category. One way for you to check your work at this step is to add up all of these probabilities, 0 0.034, 0 0.006, 0 0.096, and 0.864. Those should sum to 1. And I will let you, if you want to pause the video and give that a shot, you'll notice that they all sum to 1. And that makes sense. We know the probability of 1 is associated with certainty, that it explains all outcomes. And these are the four possible outcomes, so we know they account for all possibilities. Now, for this second part, imagine a patient who responds positively to the treatment, that their symptoms are eliminated. What's the probability that they actually had this syndrome, this TRAF syndrome? This is a very commonly missed problem, not only by statistics students, but by those in the medical profession and doctors included. And the common mistake here is if we, we know they respond positively, the, the, if you look up above, if we look and see that they respond positively, a probability or a percentage associated with that is 85%. So they'll say, oh, there was an 85% chance that they actually had that. Or they might say, oh, no, there was only a 4% chance because there's only a 4% chance that they had the syndrome. So there's a bunch of pro commonly missed steps in this problem. What I would like to do is to create a, a brief table and to use what we can call frequencies or relative frequencies to answer this problem. And what I want to do is just to assume that we are talking about a thousand people. 
So suppose that we were looking at a thousand people or a thousand patients who had these symptoms. So suppose we had a thousand patients. Out of these thousand patients, we would expect 0.034 of them to have this syndrome and, and have a positive effect. So if you were to multiply 0.034 times 1,000, what we would find is this would account for 34 of those patients. Right? So out of that 1,000 patients, we would have about 34. Now these turn out to be nice numbers. If you were doing this on an assignment, if you had 34.2, we know we're not going to have 34.2 people, but you would still write 34.2. If out of those 1,000 patients, we wanted to look at the probability of 0 0.006, those with the syndrome but didn't respond positively, that would account for, out of that 1,000, that would account for 6 patients, 1,000 times 0 0.006. Out of that 1,000, if we were to multiply by 0 0.096, that would account for 96 patients. And finally, out of that 1,000, 864, if you multiply 1,000 times 0.864. So this is the breakdown. This is the breakdown. Out of 1,000 patients, this is what we would expect. Turning this into a table, either they don't have it or they do, either it's positive or it's negative. We can kind of tear down this tree and put it into a table. So here, that they don't have it and it's positive, that's 96. They do have the syndrome and they do respond positively to the treatment. That was 34 if we look up above, and we're just rewriting this in terms of a table. They don't have the syndrome, and they respond negatively. That was by far the most popular, 864. And then finally, the last one, they do have the syndrome, but they don't respond positively, was 6. So if you're asked to create a table to illustrate the probabilities, or in this case we're talking about the frequencies, we're turning these into frequencies of, of a random 1,000 patients, this is what we would expect. Now finally we are ready to and we're set up to answer this second problem. Imagine we know the patient responds positively. That's all that we know. They come in, we really don't know if they have the syndrome, we just give them the treatment and they respond positively. What that's telling me is that those that patient falls somewhere in this column. They responded positively, so they're somewhere in here. The problem is we don't know if they did have the syndrome T, they did have it, or they didn't have it. So we know they're in this column, we just don't know which row they're in. So what we want to do is to calculate the probability that they actually have this. So we want to know what's the probability that they are among, in this case, the 34. Well, how can we figure that out? Well, how many total patients responded positively? If you take 96 patients, out of this 1,000, if you take 96 and you add 34, we know 130 responded positively. And out of that 130, only 34 of them, only 34 of them had the TRAF syndrome. So we have 34 patients out of the total 130 who responded, what we get, if you were to divide those, 34 divided by 130, we're going to round this, maybe we'll write this out maybe to three decimal points, 0.26, and if we round this to the uh, third decimal, to the thousands place, this would become 2. So a probability of 0.262, or about 26.2%. About 26.2%. Again, all we know is that the patient responded positively. The tricky part is we don't necessarily know whether or not they actually had, in this case, we didn't know if they did have it or they didn't have the syndrome. All we know is that they're somewhere in this column. We're looking for the probability that they fall into this second row. Now this is very popular in terms of conditional probability. And there's a famous theorem, goes by Bayes' theorem, which we're not going to define, we're not going to get into, but we actually used the foundations of Bayes' theorem to answer this problem. I understand that these can be tricky problems, especially if you're just trying to jump to the answer. So drawing a probability tree, 
drawing a table, breaking down the four categories, that will be significantly helpful as you go to complete these problems.